Good morning, 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 everybody. I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst the living this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Grace Amber. I come on different platforms whenever God gives me a word to share. I come on and I share it with you. So really quick this morning, happy Wednesday. I hope everybody's morning is off to a great start. I want to talk to you really, really quick this morning from the topic of equipped for the call equipped for the call. First of all, I want to start off with the scripture today. Turn with me in your Bibles to Luke, the fifth chapter, Luke, the fifth chapter. And we're actually going to read several verses here. I actually found a verse uh, as I was going through this last night. I found a verse that would have gone really, really good with the destruction of self-image. I think I did that video like a few days ago. I'm actually going to go in that description and add one of these Bible verses. And as we read, you're probably going to catch it if you watch that video. Let's get there. Okay, Luke, the fifth chapter. Let's go. Starting at the first verse. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And I'm reading from the NIV, right? Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets, right? When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. See, <laughs> he said... When he saw what Jesus did for him, you see what he said? He said, go away from me for I am a sinful man. When I did the video about the destruction of self-image, I talked about the scripture that says the wages of sin is death, right? Well, not just death of the body, not just death of the soul and the spirit, but also death of your self-image. Because when you engage in sin, when you get ready to come to God, the salvation is yours for the taking. But mentally, you can't get it out of your mind. All the sinful things that you have done, it makes you feel that you're not worthy. Let's keep going. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So that they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. Right. Let's look at this thing. So Simon and some other guys were fishermen, right? But we're going to talk about Simon today. Simon was a fisherman, right? That's what he did. That was his occupation, right? And so Jesus came on the scene to show him a miracle. But the reason why Jesus came on the scene to show him a miracle, because it would get his attention and it would, it would bring him and call him to actually his calling. His calling was to be a fisher of men, right? Well, see, what he did before, his occupation and his skill set was being a fisherman, right? So Jesus came on the scene and looked at Simon. He saw what Simon had, his skill set that he was already equipped with. Remember, there's a scripture that says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. But Jesus came and saw Simon where he was, his gift and his skill set, right? What he was equipped with was being able to fish. He was a fisherman, right? And Jesus called him in to his calling, which was to be a fisher of men. So Simon, even before he was called and he was drawn to his calling, even before he knew what his calling was, he was already equipped for it. Now, what are you equipped to do that God is drawing you to your calling and you feel that you are not worthy to do it? What is your skill set? You are equipped for your calling already, even before you come to Jesus. There are no coincidences. And whatever your skill set is, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The kingdom has great use of you. What is your skill set? Because you are equipped 
for the calling already before you even come to God, before you even come to Jesus. And many of us feel that we are not worthy because our hands have gotten so dirty in our, in our life, right? Our hands have gotten so dirty that many of us feel that we are not worthy. Listen to what Simon said. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. You are equipped for your calling. What is your skill set? Some, uh, I, I love to say this, the dope boys don't realize this. The dope boys have so many skill sets that they have used for evil in the street. And they feel like they can't come and use their skill set for the kingdom of God. In order for you to be a hustler, guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to be good with math, or else you're going to get gypped, right? you got to be good with math. You've got to be good with business. You have a whole operation. These people, this, this is why they call it organized crime. Because they have, they, they delegate. <laughs> you got one person that's over here cooking up the work. And they might be the one that's going to package it. And then you got the middleman that's going to go out and move the work so people don't come to the main man. They're going to go out and do some dealings. They're going to be the middleman. And then you have somebody else maybe to count the money if they don't have a money count machine. These people got a whole system. You got somebody that's going to go pick up the work. They're going to be the fall guy if something go wrong. They have a whole system, which is why they call this organized crime. But the adult boy feels that the kingdom has no use of them. Not even realizing that they have the skill sets to advance the kingdom of God because they are equipped for the call long before they even come to the kingdom, long before they even come to Jesus, long before they even choose to turn their life over to God. Let's talk about the prostitute. God has good use of you. You've got a pretty face and now you ain't going to come in church. I've seen these praise dance videos where the, where the girls are just sitting there with their belly out. They, they in the front of the church with their drawers and they kicking and they flipping and they turning. Uh -uh, I ain't talking about that. They be deliverance. Be delivered today. I'm talking about your looks. The kingdom has good use of you because how many of you know that people are drawn to a pretty face? The kingdom has good use of you. Your past has equipped you for the call. What about somebody who is a thief? Let's think about this thing. In order for you to be a thief, you got to have a gift, gift to be able to do things. You've got to think this thing out. You have a gift, right? You have a gift to strategize. You have a gift to strategize how you're going to get in the store and get what you're going to get and then get out. I have an old friend, bless his heart. This dude used to be able to go in the grocery store. He had this thing strategic. This man used to go in the grocery store with several layers Go back to the seafood department, get all these king crab legs. I'm talking about the prickly ones. And by the time he left from the back of the store where the seafood department is to the front of the store, he was empty handed and he got out and there was a feast when he got where he was going. Listen, you are equipped for the call that even the thief has a gift to be able to strategize and come up with a strategy to do things that many people would think were impossible. And yet somehow, some way they can pull that thing off. There is a gift and the kingdom has good use of you. You are equipped for your call. You just perverted your gift. You have just perverted your skill set and chosen to use it for the kingdom of darkness. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The kingdom has great use of you. You are equipped for your calling. Even the single mama with five kids that you've had out of wedlock, guess what? Working with those kids as a single mom has caused you to cultivate a level of patience that most people would never have. You are equipped for your calling and the kingdom has great use of your gift. The problem is, is that you don't see where you are useful and you don't see where you are worthy. Simon Peter told Jesus, go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Simon was a fisherman by trade. 
But guess what? The kingdom had great use of him. And even though he didn't feel worthy, he was equipped for the calling. I come today to tell you that you might not feel like you are worthy for the kingdom of God. You might not feel like you are worthy to come to Jesus, but guess what? You are equipped for your call and the kingdom has great use for you. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. You are equipped for your call. I love you. I hope that word blessed you. I am Grace Amber. Happy Wednesday. I'll be right back on tomorrow with another word. Good Lord willing.